I don't believe that as a people, the human species is prepared to uh, accept the fact that we are not alone. To investigate uh, UFO sightings, I like to go uh, with the witnesses uh, to the location. It enables the witness to relive the experience rather than just tell the story. Uh, two young people were driving at five in the morning. They were driving back to Pelly Crossing from Whitehorse. Little Fox Lake was on their left and they were rounding a curve. And as they were rounding the curve on the right hand side, there was a disc hovering there against the sky. They come around the corner. They just uh, astounded at the sight of this thing. It zooms across their path as they're traveling towards it. At that point, as it zoomed across in front of them, their headlights dimmed and their tape deck stopped playing. And then it shot off behind them and they were just uh, very frightened and they stepped on the gas, took off uh, for like 15 minutes, finally pulled over. They were, their hands were shaking when they got out and uh, they were very frightened. Um, they looked at their watches and both of their watches had malfunctioned. A digital watch had uh, just was the display was changing back and forth and not making any sense, and the lady's analog watch had stopped completely. There's a investigator that's uh, well known that specializes in vehicle interference cases, is what they're called, and uh, I got in touch with him, and he recommended I take um, magnetic readings on the vehicle that uh, that was exposed to the UFO, and then you, what you do later is he, you find a, a vehicle of the same make, model, and year, and you do a comparison. The vehicle we did compare to was had, had a different magnetic signature than the one that was exposed to the UFO. And what I saw was uh, this object hovering right above the roof of the house next door, which would be about 35 feet from where I was sitting. And it was about the same diameter as the house, uh, like two soup bowls rim to rim with a dome. I ran in the house and I said to my mother, come out, come out, come out. I was all excited and she looked at me rather horrified, in my opinion, and said, well, what is it? I had, of course, no words to describe it. So when she came out, uh, of course, it was gone. And after that, it was, it was as if the whole subject didn't happen because they didn't ask me any questions about it or what it looked like or anything. After that, I became very withdrawn and shy and basically retired into myself and uh, into books, being very bookish and very nervous. And uh, that lasted many, many years. Uh, UFOBC is a nonprofit organization. We're about uh, 11 years old. And uh, we simply collect and record um, observations of the paranormal uh, here in British Columbia. We document everything from your typical sighting, I saw an object in the sky, uh, abductions, where individuals claim that they've been abducted by occupants of these objects. After we collect all the data, as uh, unbiased as we possibly can be, we go back and discuss um, what our potential avenues of uh, further investigation are. Either we can dismiss it as a natural phenomenon, or as an incorrect sighting of a, a craft or something, or um, proceed further with uh, further analysis. I arrived in Prince Rupert in June. The sun came up early in the morning and it was nice and bright and so I did some more exploring and found a uh, trail down to a beach. Then the next thing I knew uh, a sort of, I guess you could call it like a, a force, seemed to emanate from the base of my spine and fire upwards through the top of my head and it was extremely powerful and it was so powerful that I felt that if I tilted my head either way that my head would blow off. <laughs> it was, I likened it to a Saturn V going up which is extremely powerful of course and then uh, I became aware or I, I felt like I could sense all living things around me like I could actually image like trees were like pillars of light and I could sense animals moving among the trees and then there was this powerful presence made itself known, uh, I guess you could say godlike. And at this point in my life, I was rather low self-esteem and uh, here I'm alone and didn't know too many people. So I was feeling a bit down and then this uh, presence suggested that yes, that is life that you're detecting 
and you're a part of it, and you have an important reason for being alive. Unfortunately, I would say that people do not approach the UFO topic with uh, an open mind. Uh, the vast majority of people are very easily influenced by the media, and depending on what the flavor of the day for the media may be, or the spin the media takes on it, uh, is indicative to what the average individual will in turn believe. In general, I believe that people are afraid. Um, they're afraid of something they cannot understand or something they cannot control. It's the reason we have locks in our doors. We're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of someone breaking into our house. The vast majority of things in the sky that people cannot identify and report to us um, that we can identify would be something like an airplane or stars. The twinkling of stars is what's commonly known as atmospheric aberration. It's caused by thermal heat differential between the ground and the air. And as you have a cold night, for, uh, before a warm day, you have heat rising up, uh, heats the air up, and you get thermals very similar to what hang gliders use. It distorts the sky and creates a very wavy-like appearance, very similar to what you see on, this, on the road. I think the concern that I have is that we're going to reach a time as a human species that we will be visited. It might not be tomorrow, it may not be 100 years from now, but same within a 10,000 year span, either we're going to see other species or they're going to visit us. I'm sure viewers are familiar with the um, War of the Worlds reading by Orson Welles. Uh, individuals in the United States, when it was being broadcast for a Halloween, I believe, special, uh, believed that it is indeed fact that the Martians were invading and attacking Earth, and there was pandemonium. I don't believe that, as a people, the human species is prepared to uh, accept the fact that we are not alone.